The Toyota Land Cruiser family, including the smaller Prado variant, has been one of the most popular nameplates in the country for years. But the current generation Prado has been around since 2009. So, today we're going to find out if it's worth buying one brand new. The Prado badge has been around for almost 40 years, and in Australia since the 1990s, it's been a mainstay as the smaller Land Cruiser, suitable for more suburban needs. I mean, in the brochure, the phrase, dropping the kids off at school is literally on the first page. Thousands of Prados sell every month, but keep in mind this is a generation that's been around for more than a decade. However, during that time, there have been some significant changes. Most recently, a new engine across the range is the 2.8 litre turbo diesel 4. That engine's now standard across the range, but the version we have here today is the top spec Kakadu, which costs around $85,000. So, let's take a look at what that money gets you. I won't spend too long on the exterior design because not a lot has changed dramatically over the last 20 years. But every model bar the base GX gets a chrome grill, LED headlights and fog lamps. On this particular Prado, the colour is called Peacock Black and it's a very, very dark green. The VX and the Kakadu get 18 inch alloys instead of 17s and every model bar the GX gets painted mirrors, side steps and roof racks. Here on the Kakadu we've got privacy glass which you can also get on the VX as well. We get to the back of the Prado and realise there's probably not as much going on as we thought there might be. That's because this one has been optioned with the flat tailgate pack. It takes the spare wheel that you might usually see on a Land Cruiser and puts it under the car, but that takes up the space that would have otherwise been allocated to a 63 litre sub fuel tank. That means that you only get 87 litres, still plenty, but not the 150 total you might have had before. The benefit of the flat tailgate pack though, is that you get an extra way to open the boot. Instead of needing to open it all the way around, you can open just the window, meaning you take up less space than you would need opening the entire door. This Prado being a seven-seater, there are three different configurations, which means three different luggage spaces. With all of the seats up, you only get 120 litres at a fairly narrow space at the back. With the middle row being the only one up, you get 480 litres like this, which is plenty. Although, with all of the seats down, you get a massive 1833 litres of space. Putting the rear seats up is also quite easy in the Kakadu because they're electric. All you need to do... <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> Once you've taken this out of the car, putting the rear seats up is actually quite easy. This is the hard part. I should point out that if you don't have these seats completely flat when you're driving, the Prado will just give you one long continuous beep and not tell you why until you come around the back and flatten the seats. It took us quite a while to work that out. Right now, I'm going to get out of the rain and into the front seat of the car. Here in the cabin, it looks a little bit like a timeline mashup. Some parts of it look like they're from the 90s, some from the 2000s, and then you've got this infotainment screen here. In other Toyotas, it looks a little bit outdated, but in here, it looks positively futuristic. Once you get past the old school vibes in here though, you realise it's actually a really nice cabin to be in. The seats are really comfortable and supportive, and since this is the Kakadu, we have all the mod cons. They're electrically adjustable, heated and cooled, the steering wheel's also electrically adjustable, plus we have the moonroof above us here. There's plenty of temperature adjustability thanks to the tri-zone climate control, and below that, you've got the controls for your full-time 4x4 system, including the front and rear diff, plus you've got the rear air suspension height adjustment, which is also exclusive to the Kakadu. Aside from all of that, the cabin does have some other nice little features. You've got the glasses holder with a mirror on it up here, some simple controls on the steering wheel, albeit a little old school, plenty of space in the door for storage, and a fridge here for keeping drinks cold during road trips. Toyota's infotainment system is, to be honest, a little bit rudimentary. But now, to bypass that, you can finally use Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. Here in the middle row, the seats are similarly comfortable to the front, and the outboard seats even get heaters. Since the Prado's design remains quite boxy, headroom definitely isn't an issue, and being 5 metres long means that there's plenty of legroom. The middle row also gets separate climate controls, and up above it, in the Kakadu, you get a Blu-ray player with a little screen that pops down. Suitable for those long trips back to 2009 when you had Blu-rays. What is Blu-ray? Now Blu-ray is an optical storage media, just like DVDs or CDs. It wouldn't be a YouTube video without an unboxing. So here we have the incredibly fashion-forward Bluetooth headset for use with the Blu-ray player. And don't they just look fabulous? The reason this is called Blu-ray as opposed to DVD is because the laser is blue. 
As I mentioned, the middle row is quite spacious, but this is a seven seater. We need to check out the back. Before I take the Kakadu for a drive, I should see how hard it is for me, someone who's nearly six foot, to get into the third row. Oh dear. Okay. Okay, as somewhat inelegant as that was, I'm actually okay once I'm in here. The seat headrest folds up like that. I'm leaning on mine at the moment, but that's okay. And with this seat up, I have almost no knee room, barely any headroom, but that's okay because I'm not a child. If you're looking at the Kakadu and thinking that the price doesn't quite equate to all of the interior benefits, Toyota has four letters for you, KDSS. That stands for Kinetic Dynamic Suspension System and it's only available on the Kakadu. Effectively, KDSS stiffens the anti-roll bars when you're on the road to avoid body roll, but still allows the suspension to flex properly when you're tackling off-road tracks. Also specific to the Kakadu is the drive mode selector down here beside the gear shift, uh, which goes all the way up to Sport and Sport Plus for, um... Well, the Prado isn't fast, but it does feel a lot more effortless than it used to thanks to that new diesel engine I was talking about. With a six-speed automatic transmission and that 500 newton meters of torque, it doesn't ever feel like it's struggling up hills, and the gearbox does a good job of keeping it in the right rev range. Since what I'm driving is effectively a Land Cruiser light, I figured it would be rude if I didn't at least take it for some light off-roading. I found myself a gravel track, and there's been a few muddy sections that I reckon would render some soft roaders incapable, but the Prado's taking it all in stride. For today, I haven't had to change the settings away from what you would normally use on the road, but as I mentioned earlier, there are plenty of options for getting out of a sticky situation if you happen to find yourself in one. I think I'm gonna head back to the road now, because I think I've made up my mind about the Prado. If you're considering a Prado and the Kakadu is on your list, there are a couple of things you should consider. Firstly, drive away, this is nearly a $100,000 vehicle, but in terms of rivals, there aren't really any that do exactly the same. It's a really spacious seven-seater that has a three-ton braked towing capacity, and its manners both on and off-road are really well behaved. And if you're thinking about waiting for the next Prado, you might be waiting a few years. The next Land Cruiser hasn't even come out, and normally there's a couple of year gap between a new generation Land Cruiser and the Prado afterwards. So nudging 100k for the Kakadu does come across as quite expensive, but if that doesn't quite appeal to you, there's still the rest of the Prado family. The VX gets a lot of the goodies that the Kakadu does, and even the GXL is pretty well equipped. But in terms of a cross point between ability and price, the Prado is kind of hard to beat. I can see the value in it, and you can see why thousands of Australians are still lining up to put their money down for one, even after so many years. So actually taking this out sort of sucks. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> this shouldn't exist. <laughs> 